This talk is Playful Apps, Why and How a GDE Perspective. My name is Raul Portales. I'm a Google Developer Expert for Android, and I live in Dublin. I came all the way here for the conference, above in San Francisco. I've been doing apps and games for the past five years, developing for Android, and I learned a few things on the web which I think you may benefit from it. So, there are two topics that come from the game industry into the app industry. The first one that has been a buzzword for the past years is gamification. Gamification takes the concept of gameplay and puts it into the apps. Games that have rules and objectives and all that and put it into an app to improve engagement and a full of other set of things. That's what not what we are talking about today. Today we are talking about playful design. And playful comes for the concept of play, as in free play, no rules. Play for the mere joy of playing. And if you have a, a kid, or you have friends that have kids, you will see that expression. That, that little boy is having fun. It's probably not concerned about the rules of the game, it's having fun on itself. And that is what we want to do with playful design. So, the way we do this is to maximize feedback for user input. A little input from the user has to provide a lot of visual feedback so they know they are doing something and they feel good about it. So, here's the example I really want you to come with me. This is a toy to help kids learn to, to walk. And it's a great example of playful design. You push it a little bit and it plays a tune. It plays a tune that can last from 5 seconds to 15 seconds because it's a random tune, so you never know what it's going to have. And it also has some lights on all of the stuff and the nose also is the light that blinks. So every time you move it a little bit, it produces a lot of feedback. Visual and audio feedback. And because it happens when you push it, it is designed to encourage the action of pushing it to walk. And that's why I really like it. By creating a playful experience of pushing him, it's encouraging kids to walk. Like pretty much all toys for kids and the shoe, they have no rules, they are just for the mere enjoyment of play. But this is probably the best example I've seen of playful design with an objective in mind implemented. And my daughter loves it. So, why do we want to do playful design? We want to delight the user. We want to have this delightful moment, this amazing uh, feeling from them. Look at them again. I, I promise I'm, I'm stopping having kids in my life. That's the last one. This, these little boys and girls are completely delighted and into what they are doing or what they are saying because they are enjoying it. And this is the key point of playful design. To make your users enjoy using your app. And a lot of people then come to me and ask, yeah, but enjoying the app is really cool, but we are a company, we, we actually need to have something back, a return on investment and all that, so why really should we do this? Yeah, because playing is immersive. And when you get people playing with your app, not just installing your app for the task they want to do with it, but with the small details they are playing around with that make it a much better enjoyable experience. If you open an app and solve a problem, that's fine. If you open an app and make a few steps that have some visual feedback and gives you a concept of playing and you achieve your goal, then you're much better. There's another great example. All these guys are from playing Candy Crush Saga. If you ever play the finishing of a level of Candy Crush, the last movement, then all the candies explode, all the remaining moves are convert into exploding candies and then they explode again. That is playful design. So, also, most apps, well, actually, not most apps, a lot of apps are opening only once, like 20% past year. And then it keeps decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. In fact, most apps are open 11 or more times. But what I mean with this slide is that the first time 
your app is open counts a lot. The first experience that the user is gonna have when he, he or she opens your app is the one that's gonna make him open it again or not. That's why if the experience of using your app was playful, they are very likely to do it again. And if it's not very good, they may try another app that does a similar thing. So we do this by putting animations everywhere. Animations, 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 everywhere. That's the key point of making playful design. Things that animate and move, go back and forth. That's key to make the user enjoy what they are doing. Does this sound familiar? Do you remember material design, how it is designed? All these animations that go back and forth? How, how does material design relate to playful design? Well, they are completely different topics, but material design, which is a lot more than just animation, was designed with the playful concept at the core. So, material design is really playful. Let's see a few examples. Look at that. This is just three, are, uh, three lines that convert into an arrow when you get the drawer menu. Completely unnecessary, but really cool. I mean, sometimes I even opened the menu a couple of times because I was enjoying the animation. It's a small detail, completely unnecessary, really cool that delights the user. Look at this one. The ripples. We already have touch feedback on most buttons. Ripples. I mean, yeah, they're very cool, but are they necessary? Well, no, but they're really playful. And that sort of small details keep adding up to make a much better experience for your users. So, this, this is a very important point. If you don't want to apply playful design just at the beginning, you want to have a, a solid app that works fine. And on top of it, to build a good user experience, with the good user flows that everything works fine and the experience makes sense. Then you put a pleasant UI on top of that that is, has nice colors and it looks good. And then and only then you can move the extra mile to make playful design on top of it. Okay? Um, what I mean is you have to get your basics fixed before you go for material uh, for playful design. Their visual design and user interaction has to be good. The functionality. You have to have a, a portrait and landscape layout really well done. You have to have well uh, supported all range of devices. Uh, performance and stability. Obviously, if your app crashes or if it is consuming all the battery, it's not going to, to work fine. I mean, you have more important problems to solve before you go into playful design. By the way, there's a link for all the essentials that you should be fixing for any Android app. It's a very interesting document. You should really check it out. So, this is a, a very good example. A load in the spinner. This is um, Expedia. So they are loading the details of this hotel and instead of putting just a normal spinner, they made it in a nice UI. So this is kind of in the middle of a nice, pleasant UI and playful design. But, yeah, always good. Put in uh, dialogues that block the user with loading screens. That's one of the most terrible ideas you can ever do. So, so how, how are we going to do it? Now we're going to very deep Android details. Before now, it, it's valid. What I said is valid for web apps, mobile apps, desktop apps, anything. Now we're going into some details of Android. Well, the first thing is we have two frameworks for doing animations. One is the view animation, and the other one is the view property animation. Uh, the first one is very old. It's actually there since pretty much the first version of Android, and it's simple but very limited. Essentially, the view position is not modified when you animate it, which means if you have a button that goes from one place to the screen to another, the touch area is on the original point of the view. And once the animation is finished, the view is going to return to the original position. So it's not great, but for simple things, it's really easy 
and straightforward to set up and get it working. On the other hand, property animation and view property animation are really powerful. You can animate virtually any property from any object that has a setter method. And you can use it to translate views. And essentially, when you move a view using view property animator, it actually moves and modifies the position on the screen. So it doesn't return back to the original position, and the toaster is moving with it. This is really the good way to go. It was introduced in Honeycomb, so you should have support for like 90% of the devices already. This is usually the best way to go. However, I'm, I like simple things, and I usually go for view animation. So, even simple things make a difference. Well, we saw the small animation on the toolbar, so the ripples, and all the simple things, one after the other, together, make the difference from a really okay experience to a delightful experience. In this case, uh, it was quite cold, and the, the floor was actually warm. And there it is. He was having the great fun. That's, actually, it's my dog. He always does. So this is one of my apps called MTG Tracker. Uh, this is a card browsing app for Magic the Gathering games. So you can search and then you can browse the different cards. And then you can switch from the text view to the image view and it works. You see one card, then you, then you see the image, then you change to another image for another set, then you see another card, and then you go back to text, and it works. No one can tell that this is bad, but it's not great. So how, how do I do it? This is what I changed. After playful design, we flip, and we fade in and fade out images, and we flip again, and suddenly, something that was just okay, is much more nice. I mean, this is something that doesn't feel rough, that doesn't feel kind of even chunky sometimes. This feels much more fluid, even though it's a terrible gift. On, on the app itself, it feels much more fluid, all in all. Much more enjoyable experience. So, about these two things we've done here, we have fading images. So anywhere where you load data and you present it to the user, in general, it's a terrible idea to just put it there. It feels sudden. It feels like a surprise. You didn't saw it coming, bam, there's the data. So, most modern image loading frameworks do this fading of images by default, but you should do this generally in everything where you load data. And it's really two lines of code. We define, define the fading XML as something that goes from the alpha 0, 0.0 to alpha 1.0, and it takes 300 milliseconds. And then in the code, we just load the animation using animation utils, and we tell the view to start an animation. That's it. So simple. Oh, by the way, 300 milliseconds is kind of the sweet spot for animations. If you made them too short, you're going to still feel sudden. If you made them too slow, you're gonna feel like the device is actually performing slow. So between 200, 300, maybe even 400 milliseconds is the range you should use. Sometimes you can have a bigger motion, a bigger animation that you can take a longer time. But all in all, I would say go for around 300 milliseconds. So this is view animator. This is property animator. What you say is, Pretty much the same. You have an object animator, then you tell the name of the property, which will have a set alpha and get alpha. And then you go from 0 to 1 in 300 milliseconds. And this time you use an animator inflator. Load the animator, set the target, and then tell the animator to start. Very simple as well. And even for view property animators, for property animators, you can do them in code. To instance it an object animator of flow from 0 to 1 with the property alpha, you set the duration, start, set thin. You're actually passing the full there is the view. So you're doing the same thing, even less code. 
My point, through a slice of code, it is very, very simple to put an animation that makes things better for the users. Let's talk briefly about flipping views. It's kind of a nice view of showing the back of a card to show secondary information. And the truth is, it's actually not, not following the material guidelines. Uh, I still have it in the talk. My point is sometimes it's very good to follow the rules, but sometimes you should break it a little bit and just try to try different things. Okay, I have only a few minutes left. I'm gonna speed it up. This is the way you flip the view in. You use the scale from X uh, origin and destination, and then you have the pivot point where you decide where it is going to take for the flipping point. Um, and it's really up to you. you. You know your app, you know where you can apply playful design. This is the live counter of the same app as before, and I decided that when you add life to a player, I will make it grow and go green, and when you decrease the life, make it small and go red. And it it looked much, much better than a sudden change in the numbers. Uh, in this particular case, be very careful, it has side effects. This annoyed colorblind people. You still have to iterate and learn. You can go beyond animations. There are particle systems. You can do particle system for your apps and everything just looks much, much better. This is an example of one app from one of my clients where you can see an animation that grows and flies out and then it explodes with the particle system. This is kind of a quiz game, so it makes even more sense to make it playful. So this is what you can do. Is This is all basic Android. All this you can do with Android. SDK, you don't have to use anything external. And of course, with gate power comes great responsibility. Animations are powerful. Particle systems are even more powerful. You have to be very wary about what you're doing with them. You don't want this. Really, if you do it wrong, playful design, can backfire really badly on your app. So test it. Implement playful design, give it to people, look at their reactions, iterate, iterate, iterate. It's really hard to tweak it, but when it works, it's really worth it. So there are other tools on the Android framework that you can use to make your app more playful. Frame-by-frame -frame animations or drawable animations as well. You can define it in XML, you can define the code, they're very nice. Backwards compatible to the first version. Interpolators to make your animations go accelerating or decelerating or do an oversaw or anticipating. Changing the interpolator already makes each animation feel a lot more different. And the view page, page transformer is when you have a view pager, which is one of the most used components. You can apply any transformation on that, and it's extremely powerful, and the examples of the visual documentation are great. So these are three simple things that you can check and start doing today. On drawbacks, of course, nothing is as easy as it looks. And animations are very, very easy to code, but takes a lot of time to tweak it. And all in all, there's no silver bullet. All right, there's no single animation or technique that can be used for all the platforms, for all the apps that is going to solve your problems. So you really have to know your app, check it out, think about it, and try and iterate, and iterate, and iterate. So what's next? So have the resources about animation or material design. All the resources about animations on Android. And the third one is a particle system library, which I made that you can use with normal uh, views in Android. You don't have to use OpenGL or anything for it. And if you have a problem with that library, I'm actually the support, this is fine. Um, that's it. Thank you very much.